Good day and welcome to another Monday segment of A Week at the Plot. And in fact, this is a bank holiday August segment of A Week at the Plot, though you wouldn't know it because it's quite cool out there. It's only about 19 degrees and it's been drizzling. So not heavily, not significantly, but it's overcast. And uh, when I was coming down to the plot 15 or so minutes ago, I felt a few spots of rain on my face. And sure enough, when I got down to the plot and I was talking to a couple of fellow plot holders, it started drizzling. It was it was obviously wet, but it wasn't heavy drizzle. And of course, the drizzle that we had, which lasted five minutes, has really not benefited the soil at all. It, it is not not enough to have soaked into the soil. So the first thing that I did when I, I came down here was I opened up polytunnel and I watered the carrots in there. So those are Autumn King carrots that we sowed a week ago, just over a week ago, and they have germinated. And there's three rows in there, just about germinating, but, but looking good. So I'm pleased about that. And then the next thing that I did is I went to the bed where we have the turnips that germinated last week and also the additional turnips that I sowed last week and the three types of beetroot that I sowed last week and I was really pleased to see that they have germinated as well so that was great but they needed a really good water and we've seemed to constantly have a breeze at the moment and that breeze of course is whipping across the surface of our soil and it's helping evaporation of moisture from that top area of the soil. So do remember to look at your plants and see whether they need water. If your plants are quite well established and they've got their roots down below and they're picking up water from, from down below, that's absolutely fantastic. But things like the seedlings, the turnip seedlings that we've got going on and the beetroot seedlings that we've got going on, those roots are so small at the moment that we need to make sure that that top area of compost is continually moist so that those roots can take up the moisture so that the plant can develop or the seedlings can develop so that the plant can develop. And in fact, I've just been looking around generally and I think the what I'll do before I go home after I've done this video is get the hose out, which, you know, on a bank holiday Monday, I'm usually getting the hose out because it's been so dry and hot. At the moment, I'm getting the hose out simply because it's been so dry, because the temperature is only sitting around 19 degrees at the moment. So absolutely nothing to write home about. And as you will remember, if you watched last week's A Week at the Plot, I have seeds. I was seed saving last week. So I saved poppies. I'm just using empty seed packets, paper seed packets at the moment. Um, so these are the poppy seeds that I decanted last week from the, the poppy heads. I've also got some of the sweet pea the Azorius Blue Sweet Pea. It says Turnip Goldana on there. It's not Turnip Goldana, it's Sweet Pea. So this is the Azorius Blue that sat outside the shed and was such a delicate, beautiful plant and delicate, beautiful flower. And the Azorium Blue was just fabulous that I thought, you know what, I'm going to, to um, save the seed from that and I'll do a few more next year. I've got quite a few in there, so um, I will definitely be sharing those. And then the other thing that I noticed the other day when having a mooch around the garden or around the plot was the fact that the freesias that we put in last year and that bloomed this year, they were setting seed heads, sort of like seed pods. And within those pods, as they were drying, there was black seeds. So what I've done is I've, I've saved some of those as well. I have no idea how to um, sow, when rather, to sow freesia seeds. 
But you know what? A bit of Googling will um, let me find out. Uncle Len used to grow, Uncle Len, Auntie Phil, used to grow so many freesias in hot houses in Guernsey. Um, but they were all from the, the little bulb, the little corn. So uh, it'll be interesting to, to learn about freesia seeds and what to do with them. And that whole, you know, the whole seed saving thing is, is what we're thinking about at the moment. And when I was looking at the Golden Gate beans the other day and, and showing you the, or hopefully showing you the light coming through and you could see the, the seeds forming within the pods and fattening up within the pods as the pod was beginning to lose its luster and, and die back. Um, seed saving is what we're doing at the moment, you know, especially if you have got really strong plants and really, you know, fabulous varieties that you enjoy. Why not save the seeds? So I decided today I would do a seed saving video. And I, you know, I wrote down my notes and, and you know, did what I, I normally do. The segments of a week at the plot, I've said before, they're not usually planned. I'll, I'll come down here and I'll go, oh, I'll, I'll do that today. Oh, I'll do that today. Sometimes I've got, a, you know, an idea in my head of what I want to talk about. And today was going to be about seed saving. And then I sat down with a cup of tea and my breakfast this morning and I switched on YouTube on our telly and there was a new video from Queen of the Gardens, Madame Vivi Gregory, and it was all about seed saving. And as she was going through talking about seed saving, I was going, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 oh, yeah, yeah, oh, must, yeah, yeah, oh, Koanga, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And then we got to the end of the video and I thought, what a brilliant video that was. So I'm not doing a seed saving video because I'm going to link to Vivi's video because it is so, so good. So, yeah, I'll link to video. I'll link to Vivi's video here all about seed saving. And it takes you through the process and, you know, is great. What I'll be doing with these seed packets that I have here is they've all been in the shed for uh, about a week. The poppies have dried out anyway, as, as actually had the, the others. So um, they're pretty dry, but I'm going to leave them in our dining room, which has a nice sort of ambient um, uh, level to it and moisture level to it. Let them dry out over the next couple of weeks in these paper seed packets. And then I'm going to pop them into an airtight container in the fridge, which is where we keep 99% of our seeds because it, it helps the longevity of the seed. So you're able to keep it in a cool environment like a fridge for much longer. So the seeds that we had from the Portuguese cabbage a couple of years ago, as I said, I think I've got enough seed for about eight years, if not more. And certainly those seeds will remain viable for at least eight years if kept in the fridge. So I thought, what am I going to talk about today? And one of the questions that comes up quite regularly with us and also was, was discussed on Planet Vegetaria last week is about our beans and seed saving from our beans. Now, beans can be particularly, let's start again. Runner beans can be quite tarty. They can cross relatively easily if there's a lot of bee activity or pollinator activity going on. So if you, you know, if you know about pollination, you'll know that pollinators, which are not just bees, they're flies, they're butterflies, other insects, they go into a flower they um, will take the nectar and uh, or feed off the nectar. They will then have some pollen on their backs, let's say, or on their legs. And when they go to another flower to look for other nectar, they'll take that pollen elsewhere to that other flower. They'll go in and while they're looking for the nectar, that pollen will rub off onto a stamen of the other flower. So it's gone from the anther of one flower to the stamen of another flower. And then that causes pollination. And in, in quite a lot of, of 
plants, you need one flower pollinating another flower. With peas and beans, it's quite different. Like tomatoes, they're perfect pollinators. So they are self-fertile. So the, the pollen will fall from the anther of a flower onto the stamen of the same flower and it will pollinate itself. So that flower is self-fertile. It will pollinate itself. And that is the case for most beans and peas that we grow. Certainly, there is evidence that if there are more pollinators about or if you are trying to um, increase the amount of flowers that get pollinated and produce a bean, doing it with pollinators or with or by hand is going to increase the volume of your harvest. But it's very often not necessary. What's necessary is a shake of a, a vine and just merely shaking the vine will allow that pollen to fall down and pollinate the flower within itself. So do, be, do bees, beans and peas cross pollinate? Yes, they can. But the likelihood is that they will self pollinate themselves. So this is why you may find certain certain beans look quite different when you take them out of the pod when you're seed saving than when you sowed the bean originally or that seed originally. The other thing to to know is that when a bean or pea flower opens at that point the pollen from the anther is rubbed against the stamen and the mere opening of the flower will cause pollination within that flower so that a bean or a pea is produced. As I say, in certain environments, it's, it's better to have hand pollination. And certainly if you're trying to cross um, two types of bean, it's good to do it by hand because by doing it by hand and then isolating the pollinated flowers, that's how you create different varieties. The other thing to know, and I, I've got a, a list here with, with Latin names, it's just like you you won't have a, a well, I don't know if there is any, but you won't have a, a lion crossing with a tiger. There are certain beans that, that won't cross. So you have the family Fabiaceae right at the top. That's what all beans are. That is their family. Then under that, you have genus. You have genus Fasciolus. In fact, you've got lots of different genus, but genus Fasciolus, that's runner beans, that's French beans, um, and that's the Gigantes butter beans that, that we grow. They're all genus Fasciolus. Then we also grow here broad beans. Now, broad beans are genus Vicia, V-I-C-I-A. And what you won't have is you won't have a broad bean crossing with, let's say, a French bean because they're a different genus and they can't, they can't cross between different genuses. Um, so so that I think that's important to know. But of course, most of us, when we're growing our, our beans, we've got our runner beans out at the same time as we've got our French beans out and at the same time as we've got our gigantes out. So the fact that you have those out together obviously can bring about cross pollination. But because they're perfect pollinators, so they are self fertile, generally, and you know, 99% of cases, they will, the, the self pollination will happen. So when you have a um, Fasciolus cochineus, which is the runner bean, that will stay as a Fasciolus cochineus because it is self pollinating. So will your Fasciolus lunatus, which is your lima bean, your, your butter bean, and then Fasciolus vulgaris, which is the common French bean. Again, 
they're self-pollinating so they will they will be fertile within themselves and you will get the bean out as a seed generally that you put in however runner beans are a little bit more tarty and i think that's because of the bigger flower and the activity that goes between them but as i say it's it's interesting that most crossing that happens you'll be able to spot it at the um at the podding stage certainly and you know what if you've got a special bean that has cross-pollinated who knows what you're going to get the next year if you put something in the next year and you like it it's a great new bean if you put something in and it grows and you don't like it you decide not to save from that for the following year i think the other thing to say is butter beans there, there's some confusion and it, it really frustrates me about gigantes gigantes are gigantes they are not large runner beans you sometimes get a certain variety of runner bean and and people say oh yes that's a butter bean it's not the 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 butter bean is a a separate species so like the runner bean is a particular species the butter bean is a different species and the french bean is a different species so if somebody saying to you oh these runner beans are butter beans no they're not because a butter bean is a lima bean it is not a runner bean so you know do be wary of that when you're trying to buy gigantes in particular but anyway i hope that's been useful it's rather long isn't it for a even for a monday segment it's rather long but um i blame vivi <laughs> <laughs> because I think mine, mine, yeah, it would have been slightly different. But uh, there we are. I'm not going to worry about that. So I hope that has been useful, even though it has been rather long and waffly. And what I will do is when I upload this to YouTube, I'll put my, my little sort of notes down here of what the different families are. So if you go into the description below, you'll see a little table of the, the four um, species, the, the two genus and the one family of beings that I have been talking about. I'll leave it there. And if you're still watching, I'll see you very soon for another segment of A Week at the Plot. Bye. Good day. These are Portuguese cabbage seedlings. We sowed them, I think, about four, four weeks ago, something like that. And they've certainly been outside hardening off for the last two weeks. And as you can see, hopefully, that they are getting their true leaves, which is great. So what I'm going to do now is pop them on individually into these so i'm going to fill them up with compost then make a hole and put each of the portuguese seedlings into one of these cells and then they'll grow on like that quite happily for about another month because what i'm thinking is that these are going to go on either side of the brussels sprouts which are growing where the pumpkins are and I'll be taking the pumpkins out in the coming weeks and these can go in place of the pumpkins, the squash effectively. And there's more in this batch here than I actually need myself so I will also be giving some away though I think best to pot on first. Right, I'm going to get on and do that and then we can have a look at them when they're in their little cells. This is the compost that I'm going to be using. It's the one that we got from Equigrow earlier in the year. So it's an organic green compost. And because it's been in a bag for quite 
a while what's that almost six months now i've put it in here and just loosened it up made sure there's no big clumps before i start putting it into these Quite a big root on that one. That's 30 Portuguese cabbage, pricked out and potted up into these modular trays. So each Portuguese cabbage has its own cell to grow in over the next three to four weeks and they've been firmed in quite nicely because brassicas like to be firmed in well and as I was doing this I thought oh I'll have a look at the cucumbers and I found a couple that are really good and something found this one really good as well look at that completely hollowed out can you see that I've never seen that before. You can see light through there. How amazing. I think I'll just leave it on the ground for whatever was enjoying it to carry on enjoying it. That's the best thing to do. I am going to put a cover on these, though it's going to be this plastic cover down below here, and I'm only putting it on to protect these from pigeons. I'm certainly not doing that lid on here to protect them from the weather because these are quite happy being nice and cool. And in fact, we're now into September, which is, I believe, meteorological autumn. Gosh. Right, I'm going to leave it there. I'm glad to have had that job done or got this job done today. And I'll see you again very soon for another segment of A Week at the Plot. Bye. Good day. It's, what is it? It's Thursday today. Gosh, I seem to be losing track of days this week. I really do. I was thinking back to that cucumber, the sort of cucumber flute that we saw yesterday, the one that had been eaten all the way through. And I remembered that I was, at one point, I was picking a cucumber and I was twisting it from the stem and somebody asked me a question, which meant I went to another area of the, the site to, to to answer their question and I came back and I forgot to pick that cucumber and it was that cucumber that I showed you yesterday and I've read a number of times that slugs and snails will will go after will attack plants that are under stress or fruit that is under stress and it suddenly made me think this morning whether there was a link between those two things. So I had almost taken the cucumber off, twisted it so that it was almost off. It wasn't quite off. And then I left it. And now I think that by trying to take the cucumber off and just leaving it, that is what made it so enticing for slugs and snails. I may be wrong, but that is sort of what I think. So I'm going to make sure when I do take cucumbers off in future, I do snip them off rather than twist them off. 
I, I mean, you know, maybe I'm wrong, but that that seems to be the that seems to have set itself in my mind anyway for the reason why that cucumber was hollowed out so so well. I mean, you know, it's a genius engineer to to do that really. Um, I've just done the September tour, and that will that will be up later. Uh, this will be up on Planet Vegetaria, Planet Vegetaria first, then the, the tour will be up uh, later on YouTube. And yeah, everything is looking sort of quite autumnal now. We are in meteorological autumn, as I said the other day, the 1st of September. And yeah, I have... I've sort of felt a little bit down about the plot, a little bit deflated, let's say, about the plot this year and the challenges that we've had. Though actually, when I did the plot tour, I was thinking to myself, you know, fantastic cucumbers. Thank you, Vivi. We've got some squash coming. We've got brilliant carrots. I've just picked three more carrots for supper. That one's a bit of an odd shape. Um, what I did notice on is it this one this one is i don't know if you can see but actually it looks as though it's three it's got three sort of growing stems coming out of it it's got one there one there one here and one here there's there's three stems coming out of it where on the a, a normal carrot there's just one um this is the this is the London market and it always has this sort of darker shoulder at the top where these are nonce and you can see how the the shoulder is very orange here and it's very sort of reddy orange at the top here so um yeah I thought that was interesting when I was looking at them today but yeah you know we've got some fabulous brassicas which is really really great We've got some squash coming. We've had great new potatoes. I don't know yet what the main crop potatoes are like. But yeah, I felt a bit deflated. But I think it's more about the the situation potentially in the world and and also other things sort of going on in in nationally and in our life locally as well. And also some some thoughts about, you know, what are we going to do? Are we going to stay? Are we going to move? Um, so I think that has that has been um, playing in the background quite a lot, all of those things. But I really need to to. Oh, the sun is out. Look, the sun's out now. I really need to think about the the fabulousness that we've had at the plot this year, because it's been there's been a lot of it you know there has been a lot of it and i just need to be grateful for that and also grateful for the people that i've got around me and grateful for everyone on planet vegetaria and that watches and comments on youtube so yeah be grateful paul be a bit despondent a bit down every now and again but be grateful for what is doing really well on the plot and all the good things that you have got around you Right. And at that point, <laughs> my phone decided to give up. Um, <laughs> it was obviously bored with what I was saying, rambling on. So, yeah, I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to say goodbye and I will see you again soon for another segment of A Week at the Plot. I'm not sure quite what we'll be doing, though at some point this week, I do need to, oh, before I go home, I need to net the the small brassica bed. But one thing I will, oh, you'll have to watch, yeah, uh, oh, the allotment tour about that. Um, but what I do need to do is the big brassica bed here with the Portuguese cabbage and the dazzling blue kale and the Nero di Toscana. I do need to put two nets along the length. At the moment, I've only got one net going over the two, as you know. And I need to put two nets over so that those brassicas have got room to grow because they want that room to grow. Right, I'm going. I will see you again very soon. Bye.
good day these carrots were really in need of water and they've had a, a good watering now i want to keep them well hydrated so that they continue growing well following their germination and a little bit of tidying well quite a bit of tidying in this bed or half of this bed I decided to take out the courgettes the Aurelia courgettes and weed because when I was watching a week at the plot not a week at the plot the allotment tour I thought oh no those weeds I've also strimmed it's been another job I've done today still need to do some raking I've done raking further down that's going to be the next bed I need to tackle oh look at that butterfly how close can we get oh not very close but look you can see a cucumber poking out there this one has virtually been completely eaten now but it's not having any others which is good so I've strimmed around here haven't raked I haven't strimmed up this path I'm going to leave it mainly because of the amount of amphibians in there at the moment I'm going to hand do this path shortly maybe tomorrow the reason I'm not strimming it is there's an awful lot of grasshoppers in there what else have I oh yes I've um yeah so I've raked up here done some more watering everything is so dry as you may have noticed when I was weeding the courgette bed and I have very loosely netted these brassicas and you know what that's that's going to do for today the sun is out look it's absolutely glorious even though that bean structure is beginning to die back it's still glorious there's my shadow oh it is lovely it's quite warm quite warm oh i've just remembered something else that i wanted to do oh my shoe has slipped off <laughs> something else i wanted to do and haven't done yet is harvest some of these sweet pea seeds so these seed pods yeah so actually i'm going to do that and i'll leave you with this shot i'm just pleased to have got a little bit of tidying done right See you again soon. Bye. good day as you can see I've taken the nets off here this white net this side is just going to do for these and I'm going to put another one over here for the Portuguese cabbage but first off I need to get in there and weed it's actually not too bad but better weed now when the nets are off than having to take the nets off again to weed 
though obviously we will be taking the nets off to harvest leaves oh look sorry cabbage white popped him on the path so yes some cabbage whites have clearly got in here but i'm not seeing any damage i think this is slugs and snails anyway what i'll also do as vivi did is any leaves that are dying back i'll remove as i'm doing the weeding this bed's now had a really good weed, or in fact there's two beds, because there was a bed that side and a bed that side with the path in the middle. Didn't find any more caterpillars or any more sign of cabbage white. So what I'm going to do now is get some chicken manure pellets and put them down on either bed. Just scatter them across well, between the plants. I don't want really them to land on the plants because you don't want them to drop in here and start burning the plants. So do put them between the plants. So bend down and scatter them. And then I'm going to cover this bed up with the netting that is there, just loosely like I did before. I will most probably put some bottles with canes on top or some hoops in a week or so maybe next week but I sort of don't have the energy today and I'll put a new net across these as well again draped loosely and then when I've done that I'll give everything a really good water there's a nice bit of moisture in this ground though it could definitely do with more and we're not going to have any by the looks of it over the coming week. So, yeah. And of course, watering them after you've scattered the chicken manure pellets will help with the goodness and nutrients of the chicken manure pellets going down into the soil. Right, chicken manure pellet time.
So that is both these beds and we can now see it's clearly two beds with that path in the middle. We did and netted and there's plenty of room for these to grow within the net. So as these grow, the nets will lift up. That's the plan anyway. And, you know, I'm really pleased with the lack of cabbage white butterfly damage in there. So clearly something I've been doing has been working. These weren't sprayed with the brassica deterrent. I thought I had, but I looked back in my notes and I hadn't. Where the Brussels sprouts over there had been sprayed with the deterrent, with the grazers. So that's it. I am going to give these a really good watering with a hose. As I say, let the nutrients of the chicken pellets start dripping, not dripping, um, feeding into the ground from the, the top. So that will be great. And then I'll see you again tomorrow for a final segment of A Week at the Plot. Bye. Good day. And as you can see, I am in the polytunnel because I'm going to be doing some seed sowing. It's quite shaded in here at the moment because of the, the big buddleia that, that sits at the side here of the polytunnel. And that is a winter job that I've got down on my list to do. It hasn't been cut right to the ground or it hasn't been cut near the ground for a good many years. I think maybe, in fact, since I've been here, and I think this year it would be good to give it a really good crop down and reinvigorate it. It's also getting quite tall. So, you know, we need to be careful about wind and that type of thing. Because I don't want to be in the polytunnel one day for it to come crashing down on the polytunnel. Or even not in the polytunnel and it to come crashing down. So, yeah, I'm sowing... Um, Two, I'm sowing lettuce and Swiss chard. So first of all, I'm sowing a Marvel of Four Seasons and a Northern Queen. Both of these varieties are good for sowing in September and hopefully we'll get some harvest from them over the winter months and then they'll pick up when the, um, the days get warmer as we get into sort of March time of next year, fingers crossed. They will be sown in seed tray, bog standard seed tray, compost in here, sown pretty thinly because I'm only really looking for maybe six, eight, ten. I'm not thinking where they're going. Six, six to eight um, plants of each variety. And um, they will end up outside in the long bed that we've got the cucumbers in at the moment. I'll show you that shortly. And then I will fleece them. Um, so I'll double fleece them most likely because we've got quite a few bits of loose fleece. We don't have any fleece polytunnels and polytunnels, fleece tunnels. And maybe that's something I'll, I'll, I'll look at um, yeah, maybe that's something I'll look at, particularly the large ones. Anyway, it doesn't really matter because at the moment I'm going to sow the seeds. Um, yeah, so what I'll do is I'll sow them. The compost will go into the, the tray. I'll sow them thinly, only maybe 8 to 12 seeds of each variety because I only want 6 to 8 plants of each variety. And then when they um, germinate and when they grow on, which they should do because they're good, as I say, for September sowing, I will then prick them out from the tray and put them into individual modules like that. So these are the larger modules. It'll give them plenty of room to create a nice root system in those modules. And then once they've grown on into quite substantial plants, I will then put them outside into that bed and fleece them, as I say. I think the Northern Queen, I'm not sure who sent us these. Um, they're harvested in 2008, so they're save seed. I've got a feeling it may be Shaz, but maybe I'm wrong. So if I'm wrong, apologies. 
the other thing that I'm going to be sowing, and I'm going to be so doing some direct in the ground where we had the Aurelia courgettes, and I'm also going to be doing some in modules, is Swiss chard. Yeah, Swiss chard for us, it bolted earlier in the year. The, the ones that Vivi gave us are doing well, but I think that bed actually needs some good manuring over the winter to enrich the compost that's in there. So what I'm going to be doing with the Swiss chard is I'm going to be sowing those direct into these modules. A couple of centimetres deep and um, just let them grow on in those modules. And then what I will do is I will put them out like I'm doing with the lettuce. The others that I'm direct sowing by the courgettes, we'll see how they do. We know that those Aurelia courgettes got eaten by slugs and snails. So I'm wondering if these germinate and do actually come up, will they grow to plants that will be able to produce for us? Therefore, I'm doing the backup of the modular sowing. So yeah, we'll see how that does. But it's just lovely to, to still be sowing some seeds and um, I'm just going to get on and do that. Once I've done that, um, in fact, no, I'm going to do that after this video because you sort of know what I'm doing. I'm just going to show you the carrots that we sowed in here, I think, two weeks ago, was it? Maybe three weeks ago. I seem to think it was two weeks ago. And they're doing pretty well. And then I'll show you the beds where the Swiss chard is going to be sowed and where the lettuce will end up. So these are our autumn king carrots, which we sowed two weeks ago today. And you can see germination has been pretty good. And at the moment, the organic slug pellets we're using are keeping any slugs that may be in here to a minimum. I'm not sure if you can see, but some of these are bending towards the front of the poly, which is natural because they'll bend towards the light. But I think they should they should grow here well. Have I said these are Autumn King variety? I'm not sure, but yeah, they're Autumn King. Right, so let me show you where I'm going to be sowing the Swiss chard. I will do some in modules. But this is where I'm going to be doing some direct sowing of the Swiss chard. Right at the, well not right at the front, but where I took the courgettes out, the Aurelia courgettes here, I'm going to put some in. And of course I'll need to remember to keep watering this bed, though of course we're still watering this bed because we've got three courgettes in there that are still producing, as you can see. I think they're most probably, well, I don't know. I mean, if we do continue to have some warm weather, they'll they'll continue producing as long as we continue watering them. So yeah, this is where the Swiss chard is going to go in at the front here. And as I say, I'll do some others in modules to plug any gaps. And then when those two types of lettuce are ready to go out, this is the bed that I'm going to put them into which I do need to weed and I will weed today. The cucumbers, by the time the lettuce seedlings are ready to be hardened off and come out, the cucumbers I think will have largely gone by then. And I've decided to use this one because I know the soil in here is really pretty good. And it's got quite a long run on it, obviously. And I just think it will be easier to double fleece this bed for the winter months because, you know, I'm hoping that those lettuce will will continue over the winter months. Whether they'll give us harvests or whether they'll slow down their growth and start again in the spring, we shall see. I might even have a look at my pennies in the bank account and see if I can get some large, very large fleece hoop nets to go in here. Um, I'm not quite sure 
how much they cost, but I'll, I'll have a look at that. But I do have fleece that I can just put over the blue hoops and double layer. So yeah, I've got options. I've got options, which is fine. Still some cabbage whites flying over there by the beans. Gone on to our neighbor's plot now. One just gone over. But yeah, not very many of them around. Right, I'm going to leave it there for this week's A Week at the Plot. And, oh, gosh, there are quite a few, actually. Cabbage whites I'm talking about. Oh, look, I've just seen a non-cabbage white. Can we get that one? Look. Oh, it's flown off. No, I couldn't get that one. Right, I will. Let's get those cardoons in the middle because that's quite pretty. I will see you again very soon for another segment of A Week at the Plot and leave you with this view today. Bye.